All right, so my name is Lena Liu. I am a master's student at uh, Georgia Tech, and my advisor is Dr. Jennifer Hassler. And what I've just made is I've made an audio filter on an FPAA, which is kind of like an FPGA, but it's all analog. And uh, let's hear the filter and hear you changing the control voltage of this voltage controlled filter with the pot. So this is a one pole filter made with an operational transconductance amplifier and a capacitor. Yeah. So if I turn this up, you can see that the waveform is changing. Okay, and that's with a ramp wave. Let's put in a square wave. Whoa. Whoa, let me turn that down a bit. <laughs> okay, do that again. So there is some weirdness going on that we haven't quite figured out. Yeah, so what I suspect is going on is that the actual circuit that I've made, which let me just bring it up real quick, um, it looks like this, uh, which is a five transistor um, OTA circuit. And what I think is going on is that as the voltage goes too low, it's cutting off this bottom uh, end okay. fit, and it's starving it of current. So there's some weirdness happening down at the bottom end? Yeah, I okay. think that's what's going on. Or I should say not in terms of base frequencies, but in terms of low control voltages. Okay, interesting. Let's listen to it with a higher frequency here. Uh, It is a low pass filter, so that's why. Yeah, it got quieter. Yep. Might want to turn that down a little more. Yeah. Here. Okay, let me play with it. <laughs> Let's go back to, uh, let's see if I've got that ramp wave. Okay, this is a triangle wave, not triangle wave, sawtooth. Okay, so that is really cool. Now, earlier you are showing me how this is actually built on the field programmable analog array. Right, so if I go to the, um, the RASP tools. These are open source and uh, they're available on Dr. Hassler's website. But basically what you're looking at right now is inside of an FPAA, there are a bunch of things called CABs or CABs. They're short for computational analog blocks. And each one of them has all of these components down the side. Yep. So I've got some NFET mirrors, transmission gates, PFETs, NFETs by, them, by themselves, different capacitors, OTAs, floating gate OTAs. We can talk about the details about what those are another time. And I guess, what do the C's stand for? Right, so all of these little squares, those, uh, this actually makes up um, a crossbar array and a connect the outputs of each of these to the inputs of each of uh, Ah, these. okay. Right, so when you wanna program, if you wanna like, uh, connect two of these things together, you click on, you double click on one of these, and then you can type C to connect them together. What that does is that in at each point in the crossbar array, there is a floating gate PFET inside of that. Okay. And when you type C to it, you're telling it to program a charge onto that floating gate to be really, really low so that it's really, really turned on. So it basically makes a connection. Okay, and you can change that a bit, right, to actually use the routing fabric not as fully on or fully off, but yes. something in between. Yes. So you can actually use that as part of your computation if you're an advanced user. Right, so what you would do for that is you can also type T in this, which is, mm -hmm. a, which is a target program, 
And when you do that, well, you should probably change the bias name if you do that. Okay. Um, and then you can set the bias value here. Now, obviously, MOSFETs are voltage controlled devices, but we like to talk about um, programming our, our uh, floating gate PFETs in terms of current. Now, the reason why is because, well, they're floating gates, so you can't actually tell what the voltage is on the gate of the Oh, network. you can only measure the resulting current. Right. Well, you, you can kind of guess at it, but you can really only, like, infer that. And okay. Yeah. So, uh, the, what you would do is you would, if you want to target program that gate voltage lower, you would increase your uh, bias current. And that, like, what it does is that it will, t it will try to tunnel some charge onto it, it'll measure the current going through it, and then it'll essentially, like, see, oh, did I get far enough? And then it'll do some calculations and then try to target more charge. Okay. It. And uh, I understand some of Dr. Hassler's other graduate students have been working on that framework over the years. Yes. So you have your one-pole filter here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a typical synthesizer would have maybe four of these with a feedback loop for resonance. And let's see, you are using one cab for one of these filters. How many cabs are on the FPAA? So if I go over to these tools, I can take a look at view routing. Oh, sorry. Uh, choose design. I need to go and actually choose like the test. I'm sorry, my workbench is kind of messy. <laughs> it's all good. And this. These tools are available on Professor Hasser's website, and they run in a virtual image for Ubuntu, for VirtualBox. Right. Okay. So this is like the uh, kind of like a drawing view of the actual chip. So we have three uh, columns, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that would be 42 cabs in total. And right now you're only using two of the cabs for that filter? Yes. Okay, so um, that gives you a sense of the scope and power of the chip. Yeah, so actually the, the low pass filter right now is only on one of the cabs. The other cab, I'm actually just using a single PFET on it, just as a, uh, like a voltage controlled current source. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Excellent. So these are unfortunately are not commercially available yet, but hopefully someday. So thank you very much.